Well, good afternoon uh, for those who are in uh, Sydney area. Those in New Zealand is very late afternoon. Those in Hong Kong, I'm not sure. You're probably just a little bit behind. Those in the US, God knows what time it is over there. It's probably middle of the night for you guys. So thank you all of you for coming uh, today, joining us uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, we've got the three of us in uh, on camera. So you've got uh, myself, Moshe, I'm the director of the festival. Anna, who's uh, yep, <laughs> who's uh, very involved in uh, all the communication with the photographers and the galleries, and Stephen who's also involved with the galleries and uh, the photographers and does a lot of the technical uh, work behind the scenes as well, including today's presentations and stuff. At the background, you can see Anita's back and, and on the other side of uh, Anna, you can see Paula. So this is, this is it. This is uh, head on. This is uh, the whole team that puts this massive festival together. So um, now that you met the people very briefly, uh, we will start the, the presentation. And I would like to say that um, we're going to have a lot of time. Well, hopefully, if I, if I stop waffling too much, um, we'll have a lot of time to ask questions, which I assume you will have along the way. But I will go through the process of what we're going uh, to do today. So roughly, I'll go through some of the, what the festival is, uh, is about, what's, what's new this year, what we suggest you do so you get a good submission, how to select the work, and then we'll show you also how it's being done hands-on so you know um, whether, you know, it's, it's be, it will be smoother, basically, for you guys uh, when you get to it. And last bit is the Q&A. So ask questions, uh, whatever, it, whatever you want. So let's start with it. So for those who are not very familiar with what we've been doing over the years, um, we started very small, turned into very big festival, still very small budget and very small team. But the idea is that we want to give opportunities to everyone. That is professional photographers, non-professional photographers, um, people who are very experienced and people who are very inexperienced. We want to nurture the talent and, and get this work out to the public. So everyone can see the work and enjoy it and obviously the photographers get the feedback and whatever else comes with it. So in order to achieve the best result, and this is based on the last 15 or so years of running it, um, we select the work with no names of the photographers. So everyone is judged, selected on equal footing. Basically, no one is better than anybody else. It's only the work that um, is taken into account. The other thing that we do, the selection uh, and the judging panels are gender bias balanced, and we try also to include people from different backgrounds, different cultural background, um, different perspectives on life, so we can get the most uh, out of the submissions, so we don't have very limited uh, perspective. Um, the other thing that we do, we ask artists to submit to the festival rather than tapping people on the shoulder and saying, you should submit because we like your work. And this way we get to um, have more work, variety of work, because we don't know obviously other people and eliminate the issue of, we know your work, please join us. So it's 
it's an opportunity to discover new work. And as a result, over the years, we have had amazing work, but by people who never exhibited before, people who exhibited but not were not very well known, and that propelled their career further as a result of it. So this is when we started in 2004, one exhibition in one small gallery in, in Sydney, but as you can see, it was already quite uh, popular. This is 2018, I think, or thereabouts, so you can see where we're at at the moment. So this is over 2,000 people at the opening of the festival every year. Okay, so what's happening this year? So we are planning on about 100 exhibitions, give or take. This is roughly the number that we end up with every year. 50 of those exhibitions will be what we called um, the featured um, exhibitions. And half of those will be part of the open program. The main difference between the two sections are that the featured program is basically funded by, um, by head-on or by the big galleries that we work with. And we help quite a lot. Basically, we do the cur curation of these exhibitions, obviously with you know collaboration with the artists themselves, but this is falls on us. The open program is more self-managed, so the artists uh, either curate the exhibitions themselves or they have a curator that we can suggest and pay for the costs of the gallery space, the exhibition uh, production, and whatever else that comes with it, opening events um, and, and the likes. Head on for those, for all of this, for whether it's featured or open program, head on supplies the infrastructure. So we've got the website, so everyone gets a page on the website with the images on it. Printed program, which actually I should have had in my hand, but uh, I'll get one maybe as we go. So um, we'll have a, a printed program. We've got a PR agency that does uh, the work. I will go through this a little bit in details further as we go through. The festival is very wide. So we've got, this is a map of, I think this is from 2019. Obviously 2020, we did not have a, a full on festival in May as we used to in the past, but this gives you an idea of the venues. I think we had about 70 or 80 venues uh, that year. And there's a big concentration in the Paddington area, big concentration in the city of Sydney area. and quite a few other exhibition spaces around Sydney. And the spaces are varied from very flashy um, public spaces to sort of less flashy, maybe um, private commercial galleries. Um, so this is at the library, State Library of New South Wales. This is a commercial uh, gallery um which relatively large space so we, we we usually when we use that gallery get very large number of people to these ones openings we used a church in the past we use all sorts of other spaces that are non-traditional as you can see this is actually a functioning church and this is in the middle of a christening as it happens to be um what else? We did some installations in water. This was about pollution, water pollution. So we had an installation that is appropriate for the space. This is along Bondi Beach, which we, which we started this year, uh, sorry, last year in 2020. Um, extremely successful. Uh, as you can see, um, a lot of people get to got to see this exhibition we're talking about thousands of people actually 
So again, non-traditional. So you can't say I exhibited in such and such gallery, but you can say my work was seen by 20,000 people. The other thing that uh, we do, we've got a touring program. So many of the exhibitions tour internationally. We've got good relationship with quite a number of uh, festivals and we develop this uh, further every year. Um, this one specifically is from Pinhao. It's a, it's a large festival in, uh, in China. I think they get something like 250,000 visitors in a week. A massive space, a beautiful uh, festival. Then we've got our annual program. This is relatively new edition. Up until last year, we more or less had mainly uh, the festival itself once a year, which ran over about three weeks, give or take. But now we've got a program that runs all through throughout the year. So we've got the head on spotlight, which is a, a meet the artist slash meet the curator slash issue based panel discussions that we run once a month. We've got first sight, which is a, an education program that we started uh, this year with the um, a number, a large number of, of indigenous uh, photographers. And the idea is to teach them, um, give them skills on, in exhibition and end up with an exhibition in the festival at the end of the year. And we are going to uh, launch a magazine later in the year and a few other things. So just more, much larger than, than what we used to have. So, why should one exhibit in a festival? This is not necessarily head-on, but any festival. What's, what's the advantage? So for those who have been to festivals, you probably have an idea uh, why. But for those who haven't, let's go through some, some of the points. There's probably a lot more. So the first thing is if I could basically say something that paraphrase uh, one of the photographers who came to Sydney from the US uh, a few years ago. And when people say, oh, why should we do this? It costs money and all the rest. And he said to them, this is not an expense. This is an investment. And the idea is that in a very short period of time, you get an access to huge amount of people, really broad audience, not just people who are interested in photography, not just curators, not just picture editors. So you get access to a whole lot of people, people who may buy the work, people who may give you a job. It's, it's very open. So the network opportunities, uh, uh, with colleagues and a lot of people come to Sydney and become good friends and have good basically network and support network from then onwards and friendships as a result of it and network with potential employers, curators, photo editors, people who may commission you to do work, may buy your pictures. Depends which area of photography you're dealing with. So this will vary obviously. Then there's access to unique venues. So you saw Bondi Beach, for example, no one has done it. We've done it. We were the first one to do it. Uh, when we go through some, there's some more images later on, I'll show you. Um, we were the first one, we were the pilot program in the city of Sydney to do work, to have work um, around the city in different locations, including on shipping containers and in, on building sites. This is not available for normal, normally to sort of people. Um, we have access to this. Um, we've got huge media exposure, um, hundreds of uh, mentions in, in the main mainstream media. This is television, radio, print media, whatever it is. 
obviously as well as uh, online. And this is through work that we do with uh, dedicated uh, advertising um, agency, PR agency. And the last thing, which is also very important, and this year even more so than others, um, head-on covers, either covers all of the cost or part of the cost, or alternatively have access to suppliers who can um, give very substantially reduced prices to people who are exhibiting here in head-on. So this is printing, framing, mounting, if, it's, if, it, if uh, the work is exhibited in a different way. So quite a lot of things. I think the main thing um, for me when I go to festivals, when I don't exhibit, is the opportunity to look at other, people, other people's work so I can see, get exposed to new work, which is really important. I think this is a very important part of being in a festival and be part of exciting event. So if we can go quickly through some other venues. So this is, for example, the main venue, indoor venue that we run. Um, so this is uh, in, in Paddington Town Hall, has been for the last few years. We've got space there to run artist talks and discussions, but the rest of the space is dedicated to exhibition ex to exhibitions. This is a um, Another thing that we do regularly and very difficult to do it otherwise, we build specific installation dedicated to the work or based on the work. So this one, for example, was about gold miners in South Africa. We built a gold mine, like a mock gold mine. So people had to go underground, had the bunker light and could see the work this way was people still talk about this years later that was in 2018 i think and um, similar to what we did at the church which you saw before this is a um, installation that we had in the middle of uh, george street in sydney and we had the uh, shipping containers as you can see at the background we had four shipping containers and the the work was on on the containers you can see they had on some of well, two of the head-on teams, me and another person, and and a whole lot of people who were visiting the festival and had exchange between them. So there's the people here I can see from Europe, a couple of people, there's an American, another two Americans. So this is the opportunity of being in a festival. That's what you get. It's the exchange with these people. More installations. So this was an uh, Australian artist uh, from Perth, and that was an exhibition installation and the main space that we had. I suggest you go and actually look at the website and, and, and explore it yourself because some of these exhibitions are absolutely fantastic. That's another space we've been using since the very beginning. We were the very first one to use it, and the main, I'd say, organization to use it every year. Uh, this is Paddington Reservoir Gardens. Again, non-traditional, very popular. Lots of people visit, as you can see, this is another picture of the space, amazing space. And we've got installations in the middle of the city. So this is Pitt Street Mall. Um, the numbers quoted by the city of Sydney, this is pre-COVID, I don't know what it is now, but before COVID, 70,000 people a day go past these, these installations. So we can't guarantee how many people stop and look at, it, at the images, but anecdotally we know that a lot of people respond to it. These are the hoardings. So as I said, we were the first one to do this. This was the pilot program, extremely successful. And this is the networking opportunities. So we run artist talks. This was one about, I think, photojournalism. You can see a number of people, photojournalists there, pretty much from all around the world. Is, um, and, and the people in the audience. So it's informal opportunity to talk to people one-on-one -on -one rather than 
listen to them on a, a webinar or whatever it is. And hopefully this year we will be able to do this again because last year we didn't. We did it all online. Okay, so practicalities. How do we curate a body of work? Actually, before I go there, in the chat, if you look at the, your uh, uh, page, on the right-hand side of it, there's a chat box. Please write any questions you've got or any suggestions or any comments, whatever you want, and we can deal with it at the end when we get to the Q&A. Okay, so how to curate work? So, I'll give you some tips. It's not all, it's not definitive uh, list, but for those who have done it before, this will be repetitive somewhat, but those who haven't, it will be something for you to start thinking about. So, the most important thing in the submission is that the work is cohesive. So basically, we don't want to see something that is, you know, one picture that you took of a landscape and another one of a portrait and another one you did underwater and another one is a photojournalistic one and another one is from one project and another from another. It needs to be one project that you look at and you say, yes, this looks great. It's, I understand what it's about. It's similar style, similar narrative hopefully also sequence in, in a way that makes sense. So if you look at this one, for example, you may think, you, you know, okay, this is all about underwater photography. You know, it's about the creature of the, of the sea and you get an idea, but maybe there's another way of sequencing the, the images. So you may want to have all the dark ones together and all the colorful ones together. You may want to create a different sequence that is based on shapes, on colors, whatever it is. The next one, which is really important, is to avoid cliches and basically getting into um, creating a body of work that is actually different to others. So we usually get work and it's sort of cyclical you know one year we will get a whole lot of work that is shot uh, um, on a drone drone imagery and you look at one after a while they all look the same so how can you make the drone images to look different um how do you create any a, a series of images that are actually that the people selecting the work will stop and look at it. And people selecting is the equivalent of the audience. You know, you want the work to look different because when people see the same thing over and over again, they tend to ignore it. So what is it in your work that is going to look different to other people's work? So it could be based on a whole lot of things. Obviously, the story itself, the subject matter is one thing. Um, it's your perspective at it. So sometimes it could be literally your perspective. It shots from above or it is shot, you know, from below or whatever it is. But other times it would be perspective as in what, how do you look at the subject matter? You know, your personal perspective at it. How you compose, how you light it how you process it, you know, do you use Photoshop heavily or not? And if you do, what do you, how do you make the image looking different to others? Just as an example of cliche and what people do. So at the beginning of the early days of Photoshop, people used to turn images, color images into uh, black and white and then color only one item within the image which look really great when you see it the first time, maybe even the second time, but after a while, it, it, everyone started using it. So you don't want to follow a trend. You want to do something that is, is yours. Um, and obviously the subject matter that uh, you need to avoid repeating yourself or repeating others. Now with the personal style, I just touched about it a little bit before. Um, you don't want to use filters. 
in Instagram or on one or Photoshop or whatever software you're using, don't use the popular ones or use the popular ones, but make sure that there's a reason for it and it looks better because of that, not that it looks exactly the same as somebody else's work. So same applies to Photoshopping. Don't overdo it. It looks terrible. Um, one thing that is pet hate of mine, and I'm very sensitive to it, and I'm sure other people selecting work have their own sort of uh, ideas. Um, it's something to do when, when people uh, have vignetting uh, through Photoshop or other software. So what vignetting is, it's that the center is lighter than the edges of the image. So you get this sort of looking through a tunnel, which is really good tool to have in order to concentrate people's attention onto the center of the image or whatever it is, the lighter area of the image and ignore the edges. But when it's done, overdone, it's heavy handed sort of exercise, it looks very obvious. You get these dark corners and it looks terrible. So something to avoid and other things like that, I would recommend do not do. Um, if you do, do it subtly so no one can notice it. It's a bit like dancing, you know, you look at the dancer from a distance and they look as if they are floating in the air and it's really easy and anyone can do it. But when you stand next to them, you see the sweat and you hear the, the sound effects that, you know, exerting, exerting, you know, that, that difficulty of doing it. You don't want to be in this situation. You want, you want to be in the situation that no one notices. It looks easy and as if no one put any effort into it. So, good story. So, we're looking for a narrative. This is also what makes your work cohesive. You want to have a good story behind the picture. So, people look at it and say, wow, I didn't know this. So, this is on the um, um, editorial level, if you want. This is, this is the subject matter. I'm telling you something interesting. So mainly to do with uh, documentary photography, photojournalistic type work, but it applies also when you do fine artwork. You want or even portraits. You may have a, a subject, you know, all the portraits we had one a few years ago was about facial hair uh, of men. And it was like in response to, uh, I suppose, the New York sort of uh, men started there, I suppose, uh, having big beards or moustache or whatever it was. It was really funny, um, quirky look at um, phenomenon, social phenomenon at the time. So this is a, the story you're telling through the images. So it's what the subject matter is, how you sequence it, and Sometimes it could be based on colors or based on time, time frame or whatever it is. So you want to have something that join the images together to make a good story or make it cohesive in other ways. Then we've got the description. So Actually, I don't know, Stephen, did you find, if you found the, uh, the website, there's a funny website that you can put uh, a couple of lines and it writes an artist statement for you. And it's very in, in art talk, so no one can understand that. So it's a bit of a joke, um, but the idea is not to do that. So you need to write about the work in a way that makes sense, as concise as you can. No one wants to read essays. Um, definitely not when we get submissions from you. We don't have the time to read reams of text. So as short as possible, 
but still has the essence of the story of the, what the work is about. You can explain why it is important, why you did it, your connection, your personal connection to it without going overboard with this, you know, I got my first camera when I was 15, you know, my grandfather died, you know, all this stuff, avoid this one. No one is interested in that. But if it's something that is close to your heart and that's the reason why you're doing it, by all means, you should include it in to give, give us, the people who select the work, an idea why you decided to go with that subject matter. Um, then you've got, you have to think of what is the perspective because each work that you do is obviously the subject matter, how you interpret the subject matter and then how the audience interpret your interpretation of the subject matter. So you have to think of that as well. So you need to write to the people to, I won't say second guess, but at least explain certain things that they would have access to the work. Um, don't describe the images. This is a no-no. You know, if, if the image has a dog in it, do not say this is a picture of a dog. And you'd be surprised how many times we get material that the description basically tells me, tells us what's in the picture. We don't need to know that. It's already there. And if you need to explain what's in the picture, it's either the picture is not good or the picture is amazing. And without the description, we would not be able to access the image. So that's when you put this information in. And avoid our art verbosity. So um, if we manage to do it during the session, we'll, we'll send you the, the email, the address, the web address for this one that I mentioned to you. It's very funny, worth it. Okay. Now, the other thing that is very important, and we get to see it quite often not adhere to, is good technical skills. Um, quite often we get great ideas. People come up with the most original ideas and say, this work is about whatever it is. And then you look at the picture and there's none of it, or there is something in it, but it's so badly executed that there's no way that anyone is going to be interested in looking at these images. So make sure that the images are both very good technically, as, as good as you can get them to be, but also have good content, good idea, and all the other elements that we, we've been talking about. Okay, I'll get to the selection process and I'm not looking at questions at the moment unless there's something very acute. Um, I'm just looking quickly here. Um, okay. This is something that I can respond to in after. So the selection process, how do we select? Again, this is something that is more specific to head on, but being part of selection, the selection process in quite a number of other competitions and festivals, it's similar-ish for most, in most cases. So first of all, the selection panel itself. That's a very important part because these are the people who look at the images and put aside the ones that are um, more likely to be selected at the end of the process. Um, so this is very important part of the submission from, from our perspective and, and should be also from your perspective. You need to see who the people are, not try to second guess what they what they want, but make sure that there's a variety of voices there that your work will not fall into somebody's lap that is totally not interested. For example, everyone is interested in documentary photography. No one is interested in fine art work, fine art photography. You, you can be almost assured that the work is unlikely to be selected. So we make, we don't, have a tick box, but at the same time, we try to have a variety as much as possible 
in the selection. So this year, for example, we've got seven women and five men, two people, First Nation artists, seven photographers, practicing photographers, and five curators, academic photo editors, and <coughs> five people from culturally and linguistically diverse. I know it sounds like I'm part of some organization with the tick box, um, but it's quite important for us. So I'm, we're using here the shortcut, but really at the bottom, the bottom line is we've got a bunch of people who are really, really good at what they do. Oops. Uh, really good at what they do. And you can see the people on the screen, different uh, background, different experiences, um, different perspective at life you know, different age groups. And basically, this is how we ensure that we get good selection. So when we look at work, sometimes we end up with material that from personal experience. For example, I would look at work and do my selection. And then I look at the other selection that comes from the other people and discover that there's something there that I totally ignored because for whatever reason, ran out of time, didn't read the description well, or whatever it is. And I look at it and I say, wow, this is amazing. Or otherwise, people look at it and say, this is like such and such, you know, or it explores certain idea, and then the work is in. So it's really important to have a variety of people on the selection panel. So the process itself so the questions the selection panel may ask so as you can see first of all are the images good each and every one of the images which means if you've got a selection of work put only the good images do not put images that are fillers as as we call them just fill space if you've got 10 good images, put 10 good images. If you don't have 10 good images, put only eight in there. Don't put pictures that describe the scene or explains why you're there or whatever it is. It's irrelevant. The images need to be really strong. Next question is, is it cohesive? Which we went through already. Is there a unique approach to the subject matter? Again, originality. We don't want to see the same thing over and over and over again, which we do tend to get, as I said, in a cyclical manner. So every every year we get some, some subject matter that appears more than other years. For example, transgender was a very big topic a couple of years ago. I don't know how many submissions we got. They're all, they were all very valid uh, um, exhibitions or proposals. Um, but we had to get the best out of it because we couldn't show so many about the same subject matter. Um, does the photographer show in-depth understanding of the genre or demonstrate a deep connection with the subject? So this is the most obvious one. You do a photojournalistic project or you do portraits, a series of portraits. You look at the images, you want to see some connection between the photographer and the subject. You don't want to see something that looks exactly the same as the next, pic next picture. Great background, great lighting, great posing of the person, but they all look the same. They look like pictures from high school, you know, that we take, that were taken at the time. They're all exactly the same one after the other. You want to have something that says something about the subject matter and something about you in relation to the subject matter. And I'm, I'm using portrait. It's the easiest one, but it's relevant to any, any subject matter that you take pictures of. And the last one we talked about, is it well executed technically? So we want to see work that is done well, not we, we, we can't include you know when the selection is so tight we don't want to um, include work that is not the best possible okay so the the practical 
way of how we do it. So we've got two rounds. Once we receive the material from you, we divide it into, um, we send it to the uh, selectors and the selectors look at this work on their own computer and have a very simple job to do. Yes, we love this work. We think it should go in. No, we think this work is substandard or we've got other work that is a lot better than that. And maybe is, I like the work, but depending on the overall collection of work, we'll decide then whether it goes in or not. So that's the first round. Then we receive the material from this, from the selectors. And by the way, just to reiterate, they see only the pictures and the description. They cannot see the name. The second round is all of us get together in one room or online uh, for those who are in remote places or during COVID time and discuss those submissions in person. So we've got a short list based on the, the best work that each one of the people, of the selectors put forward. So usually we ask them to do, I think, I can't remember, 40 or thereabouts images um, um, bodies of work. So we end up with whatever, 100, 200 submissions to look at. And then we go through a filtering process and remove those exhibitions that we think are not as good as the others and end up with the final list of exhibitions. And during the day, there's very um, sometimes serious discussion about work, why we should or shouldn't include it. And each one has a chance to, to have a say about it. So this is when it becomes really important to have good people in the selection, on the selection panel, people who have different perspectives um, at whatever we look at. So sometimes we may have someone who is very um, knowledgeable in landscape photography, you know, that's their area, for, uh, their forte, and we look at um, another, another work and suddenly they will come up with a question that everyone kind of says, ah, oh, we didn't think about it because everyone is already in the headspace that yes, this is this portrait or whatever area it is, 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 uh, is very important to include because of dot, dot, dot. And these people may come into the conversation and say, I don't see anything in it. Tell me. And that's when the conversation gets really interesting because that's a chance to talk about real issues about photography and about how people take photographs and what distinguish one work from another and why we should choose one and not the other. So a very rigorous process that we go through to get the final exhi exhibition program, a, a festival program. Um, now, this is just a little bit of background. We did it uh, for yesterday. We had a fantastic presentation, which if you were there, you know, if you went, uh, you missed something very good, but if you are members, you will be able to see the replay. It was a session for International Women's Day. So for that one, we looked at the number of people who submit to us and how they split on a gender basis. Uh, over the, you know, in the future, we'll probably have a better uh, split to do with uh, countries and to do with the cultural uh, background and all the other things. But at this stage, we just did split between male, female. And as you can see, most of the people we're getting work from are men. So for the women out there, please submit more. Um, so we start with a fair bit of a uh, men submitting. This is translated into 
exhibitions, as you can see, there's a split there. So a little bit more men than women, but big group of uh, um, group shows that are partly women, partly men. Um, and as you can see in the featured exhibition, the, what the split is like as well. So sort of similar-ish, but um, we do not say, oh, we need more exhibitions by women necessarily. We say we need more exhibition, good exhibitions. So that's part of it. Um, and I'm not suggesting you that, that there are less good, good submissions from women. I'm just saying that's what we ended up in the last, whatever it is, 10 years or so, five, five to 10 years. That's roughly what we ended up with. So the more we get, the better the selection will be. That's pretty obvious. Okay, so what we do now, uh, I'll ask uh, Stephen to do a very quick uh, demonstration and then we've got uh, time for some Q&A. So over to you, Stephen, please. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. And um, good afternoon to the people living to the east of me and good morning to the people living to the west of me. Um, so what I want to do is just give you a bit of a demonstration of um, how to submit your work for our website. Um, so let me just go back. Um, Moshe, can you just let me know if you can see my screen? Yep, I can see your screen now. Yep. Okay, great. So um, the first thing with our, well, uh, when you contact us, I'm the one that replying on the other end to help you out with the submission process. And one of the most common questions I get is about the image size and uh, image uploading issues. So I thought I might just start in Lightroom and just let you know how to, how I resize images for a submission. So once you've got your selection of your 10 images, um, and you go to export your images. And in the export dialog, there's a couple of settings that will make your life a little bit easier when you submit work to us. Um, and they can be found in the file settings. So our uh, submission process only lets you upload images less than 500 kilobytes. So I limit, select the file limit size to 499. And then I change, but make certain the color space is sRGB because the first round submissions are online. Um, so it will be on web browsers. So it needs to be in sRGB color space. And then the other thing is image sizing. Uh, we want the image sizes to be 1200 pixels on the long side. So I resize to fit the long edge of my images to be 1200 pixels and the resolution is 72. And then when I click export there, I'll generate all my images, which I've already done already. So I'll just come across here. So I've got all my images ready to go. So they're all resized. So, so to, to submit work, you just hit submit in our main menu. And you go to our landing page. And then you will find all the information that we'll have. Uh, about the submissions, the terms and conditions, a better description of what the differences between our programs are, um, the guidelines, all sorts of extra information. But today I just want to make a quick submission. So I've already click on make submission and I'll get up to this page. So I enter my title, my name, and then when I get up to the images, what I find the easiest way to do is I just select the images and drag and drop into that little box. And then you'll see all of them as little thumbnails and you click upload and you just sit there and make a cup of tea while the little arrow just spins around as it uploads all the files. So just give that a moment. Um, you can also upload them one by one. So you can drag and drop each one one by one. So once they've finished uploading, you can enter in a title and a caption for each image. Now, the little thumbnail is just cropped to be square. So your actual file is still the same size. It's just a little preview square. So this could be um, New Year's Eve 2020. And I could say um, this was taken something there. But I, I'm a street photographer, so I never title or capture my work. So I'll just skip all of that. Uh, then I need to, you need to provide an exhibition description. So 
series. I should have pre filled this out. I've forgotten how to spell. And then uh, a bio. Um, so you actually see like there's a character count there. The exhibition description, probably about three uh, paragraphs is plenty. And then the bio, the, the selection panel don't see that, but that just helps us in the office get to know you uh, at the beginning of the process. If you have an exhibition venue locked in, you can fill out the venue name and the suburb and the exhibition dates that you have. Then we want to know uh, But this is an optional thing. So if you don't have one set up, just leave a blank. Then you fill out a bit of information about you. So I'm a solo artist. Here's my emails. Uh, then we have, for the first time, uh, we're actually collecting a bit of um, gender information and a bit of um, background. So if you're young, First Nations, if you're from a culturally and linguistry, linguistically diverse background, all these information doesn't affect the outcome of your submission at all. All it does is just helps us understand if we're reaching the right audiences or if we need to improve our practice a little bit. Um, so that's all optional as well. You don't have to fill out them. The other thing that people have a little bit of difficulty with is our social links. Um, so what we want there is the actual web address to your account. So the, here I've given that um, our Instagram account is head on photo fest. So I just type in the username after the forward slash. Uh, once again, you don't have to fill that out, but just helps us uh, mention you in social media if you've got an obscure um, Instagram name. Uh, then we come down to there, then we just accept the terms and conditions, click save. And then once again, we sit there waiting for the little spinning arrow to go through. It will redirect you to your shopping cart, ready to pay for your submission. So you just continue through and finish the payment process. Um, and just enter in your account information process. Um, you'll be sent, uh, once it uh, goes through, you'll be sent a receipt and just hang on to that receipt because that's proof of submission process. So once you've paid, all your submission will automatically go into our selection uh, process. And that's about it. Okay. Uh, come back to you. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, Stephen. Um, I hope this is uh, um, clear. If you've got problems, we've got a bot on the on the site or just send us an email and we can give you some assistance. Please don't leave it till the last minute. I think if I forgot to say it in the, the, the requirement, I think this is number one requirement. Don't leave your submission to the last minute because ultimately there will be, there will be issues um, along the way. You know, either you don't have the right uh, stuff or the website collapsed because of heavy traffic. You don't want to be in this situation that five minutes to midnight, you realize that you missed, you missed the submission. Um, at deadlines, the timeline is pretty tight. So we, don't, we won't be able to extend times because it creates difficulties for us later on. Um, you know, Across, basically everything becomes delayed. So just do that. Okay, so look, very quickly, this is what we talked about, and then I get to the Q and A's. So selection is done with no names. Um, the exhibition um, it's is part of career development. Um, we've got about 100 exhibitions that we're going to have this year. About half of them will be curated, half of them will be part of the open program. Um, the, um, we've got all sorts of exhibition spaces, so some work is going to be more suitable to be inside a gallery space, you know, printed, you know, in the traditional way and framed. Other material may be better suited to be outdoors. So this is something that we take into account when we do the programming. And I think this should have been probably number one. This year, thanks to the support of the 
create New South Wales and partly because of the horrific year that many people had last year, we are able to fund a larger number of exhibitions. Um, I won't say all exhibitions, but significant number of exhibitions. So this is something for people who are really struggling that would be very uh, helpful. Um, for others, um, hopefully you can uh, carry it yourself because we have we have very limited resources. So um, this would be a great support to the community if if we can spend the money on someone who really in need of the exhibition then it will basically if someone can pay for their own exhibition it will help us cover a cost for someone who's re in a real need okay so questions so i've got a few questions here can we submit more than one yes we can you can submit more than one um, more than one uh, um, body of work no problem just have to do it separately don't don't mix in the same submission because that becomes non non coherent we look we look at it the selectors and say oh it's a mixed bag we don't know what to do with it so split it one and the other as many as you want basically um is there a multiple number of calls throughout the year no this is it if uh, if you've got it please submit it now don't delay even if it's not 100 percent cooked put it in if it's a great show you will have a bit of time to work on it anyway after and we will take this into account and you can put it in the description that this is work in progress and we'll take this into account. We'll talk to you and see how far into it you are and allow for, you know, some problems, so-called problems with the work if, if, if we think that it's really good um, otherwise. Um, okay. Um, do the festival organize choose where the exhibitions will be located? Yes, we uh, allocate the spaces based on what we think is the best possible fit and based on requests from the photographers. Some photographers are really keen to have a gallery. Some photographers are really keen to have the exhibition outdoors. One gets supposedly more kudos and the other one gets more visibility. So it depends what people want and what we think would be more appropriate. Um, when uploading submission, is it required relevant to specify print size for the images? No, it's not. Um, we know usually what the quality of the file is and we print according to the space. So some exhibitions end up being relatively small, they're framed in a gallery. Some exhibitions may end up really large because they happen to appear on a shipping container in the middle of the city and everything in between. So yes, you can mention it, but it's not really that crucial at the end of the day. Um, okay. Would it be worth submitting work that was refused last year? So yes, I would say, Possibly yes, um, without seeing the work I can't say obviously, but we have different people selecting the work each year, different work that is submitted. So things change from year to year. We may one year decide not to have it because we had too many submissions already of similar subject matter or similar style or look or whatever. And a year later we may decide, oops, this is really great work you know we should have it so please submit if you think that it's good enough if it, the work is good please submit minimum number of images to be submitted for a project we ask for 10 images it would be good to have 10 images but sometimes people have less and that's when we select only few images from the from the work and create a group show 
and each photographer may have only four or six images to exhibit. And this is a great way also to start exhibiting. This is, gives you an, a chance to, to understand what, what it takes to exhibit. It gives you a chance to get feedback to your work from real people, not just family that usually would say great work. Or alternatively, if you, if you live in a not very supportive family, they will just give you hard time. Um, so, yes, 10 images, but okay to, to put less as well. But put only the best pictures, non, not fillers, as I mentioned before. Um, okay, space for description. Put the description as we, as we talked about before. The basic, concise, do not go overboard. Um, if you want to put a little bit of background, put it later further down. So if we get the idea at the beginning, it's enough. We can move on, say, yes, this is good. And if we need more information, then we can go further down uh, in the text and read that if need be. But please be concise and not indulgent, not self-indulgent. Um, do we need to list the artwork, describe media and so on? No, you don't because unless it's very relevant. Uh, if we have work, um, if it's going to be printed, straightforward printing, don't bother. If it's something that you printed, uh, it's an alternative process, it's something that you do differently, by all means, definitely you have to do that. So we know what it's about and treat it accordingly. And then we may need to talk to you and ask you to do the production work because we obviously can't do it. Like we had a, an exhibition last year of uh, amazing work that I think it was before there um, of plants that were um, decomposed on top of a light sensitive material. So that was very different process and it was very important to know how they did it. Um, if you've got exhibition at the same time as festival in Sydney, can we be included in the festival map? Um, qualified, yes. You need to submit to us now so we know what the exhibition is and if it's suitable, if it passed the standard, then yes, it will be part of the open program. And if it's really, you know, amazing work, part of will will include it part of the uh, featured program so it's definitely worthwhile doing that if you did not submit through the process we may not be able to include it or there's a very high likelihood that we will not include it in the program and um, can i submit previously exhibited show yes you can we we don't ask for exclusivity um it's especially if it's a uh, par other part of the world if it's in sydney we may not if it's we don't want to show work that other people have seen it already but saying that we're not going to say no to it just because so if we think that it has enough exposure then we may not include it but if it didn't have much of exposure in sydney when we still include it um did you say fine art photography will not be selected? No, I said exactly the opposite. The festival um, is a melange of a whole lot of genres in photography. It's basically celebration of photography. So if it's fine art photography, we'd love to see it. We usually don't get enough of that. So the more we get, the better it is. Um, but we do have quite a lot of photojournalistic slash uh, documentary work, um, but we'd love to see absolutely everything you can think of. Street photography, even wedding photography. We had a few years ago, we had a series of wedding photos by a, an Iranian photographer who took pictures, uh, wedding photography in Iran. And that was an amazing show. So do not, exclude yourself uh, just because you happen to be a wedding photographer or commercial photographer, whatever it is. We include absolutely everything as long as it's good work 
and it says something something new. Um, uh, was 72 DPI. Okay, the technical stuff, um, the work needs to be 2400 uh, pixel across. That's all. So whether it's 72 DPI or whether it's 300 DPI, it doesn't matter as long as it's 2400 pixel across. Um, how old can the photograph be? Can be any time up to 100 and whatever it is, 70 years old. Basically, from the beginning of photography, if you've got work that was done on the garotype, we would love to see it. So whatever you've got there, submit. There's no, there's no limit on time. Over the years, we had work which was some of the best work that we showed was by people who went through the archives and had an exhibition of work that has never been seen before. So please send us material if you've got that sort of work. Um, what is what are the additional costs for the featured uh, section? So at the moment we hope to cover costs, um, all costs. Um, there may be costs incurred in registration to help us out with the. Um, the PR and production cost and whatever else it is. But um, at the moment, the intention is to cover these costs uh, here at Head On for as many exhibitions as we can, hopefully the whole program of featured exhibitions. Is funding available only to New South Wales photographers or Australia wide and beyond? No, we will cover it we will cover costs um, beyond New South Wales. Uh, do we have to have a little a title and caption for each photograph? No, you don't. If, if it's relevant, please put the captions. If it's not relevant, do not waste your time and do not waste the selector's time. So don't put it in. Uh, if we are an emerging artist, and definitely can't afford to fund our own exhibition, uh, do we know that in our application? Um, look, if you want to say that, you're most welcome to, but it's not necessary. Um, we will contact you once we finish the selection process and offer you a space. If it's a covered space, um, then you will be uh, very happy with that, obviously. If we can't afford that because it falls beyond our scope because there's limited funding, we just maybe I digress here for a minute. We operate on a shoestring. Compared to many other festivals in Australia and in the world, we've got extremely limited resources. We are really pushing it to the limit so we can actually have great festival and support the great work that is out there of especially of people who cannot afford it. So that's that. Um, where's the next one? Um, are we meant to choose the galleries? Uh, we don't know these venues. Okay, so we will um, allocate spaces. In some cases, it will be outdoors. In other cases, it will be galleries. We've got a list of... Um, galleries in Sydney that we've been working with over the years and once you are selected we will pass this this list to you and then you can negotiate directly with these galleries some galleries are extremely expensive and this is comes back to head-on covering costs and um, some of them are extremely expensive uh, one of them charges I think 1750 1750 dollars a week and you have to do your own printing the production cost and sit in the gallery yourself at the same time. So it can be extremely expensive. Sydney is an extremely expensive place to exhibit. Um, so we will give you a list. You can choose. Some galleries are very um, friendly to young photographers, so they are less expensive. Others are very prestigious and 
charge more, but that will be, we'll give you the list you can choose. Um, are we meant to choose the galleries we went through? What are the open program? Uh, did you already go over that? Okay, so the open program is basically um, work that we cannot, because of restrictive amount of manpower, I suppose, or human power, uh, we can't deal with and lack of resources as in in financial resources. So these are the exhibition that we think are great shows, should be in the festival, we'd love to include them in the program, but we cannot actually uh, curate them or produce them and basically deal with the gallery or whatever it is. So these are the exhibitions that we leave up to the artists to deal with uh, themselves. We still include them in the program. We still promote them through different channels. Um, so you still get a lot out of the festival, even if it's not part of the so-called featured program. Um, can I show my work in Victoria? Yes, you can. Um, in the past, we had exhibitions in different parts of Australia. We'll include in the program and promote it through social media and, and some other things, depending on availability of resources and whatever it is. But yes, it will be in the program. It appears in the printed program. It appears in the, in the online program. And we promote it in different channels. Um, okay. So um, I had my two videos selected as feature shows five years ago, but the black room was not available to show them. They weren't featured. Can I resubmit them? Yes, you can resubmit them. Um, as I said, things change, certain things change, certain venues become more or less available. I suggest just put it in. If it's good work, we will work really hard to uh, find room for it in the program. Uh, do you expect full res images for submissions? No, please do not send full res. Send us high enough res that we can look at the quality of the images. And we're using these images later on for publicity. So when we, or for the program, the printed program, but for the exhibition itself, we ask you to send us the high res images so we can print from in, and get good quality. Um, so we do the printing in most cases. In some cases, artists prefer to do the production especially when it's in alternative uh, processes, in the case of alternative processes, which obviously we can't do. Um, can we partner with an organization and still be considered? Yes, most definitely. Please contact us as you go through the process so we don't get surprises later on and we realize that we can't accommodate. Um, this for whatever reason. So before you go then down that path and definitely do not promise any organization or any sponsor um, um, any, any ideas that you're going to be in head on until we actually say you will be in head on and then we will send you the guideline how to do with the venues and sponsors. Um, If we have ideas about specific ways to engage the public, exhibition like workshops, interactive activities, yes, let us know, most definitely. You can do it in the submission and even better, send us an email. So you can send an email to Stephen or Anna or info at head on, so we would get the information. Um, open do not, okay. Do we need to provide release forms for any people in the photos? Do we need to provide release forms for... Uh, okay, so it appears twice. Okay, so um, release forms. No, we ask you just to be responsible uh, as far as um, uh, intellectual property is concerned, i.e. we want to know that the work is yours 
that you did not steal somebody else's work and anything else that if you've got people in the in the images that you actually have an agreement with these people whether it's a release or whether it's a, any other agreement that you went through that's fine we don't even need to see that as long as you can uh, acknowledge that you've got that um, then it's it's fine we just don't want to have people suing head on because we exhibit material that uh, has been used uh, improperly so um if you can uh, think of that one and also you don't want to be sued for using material inappropriately so make sure you you do the right thing and i would say more than that when you take pictures of people you really want people to be part of the process you don't want to steal the image if i could use that word um without without them knowing so you usually want people to be to know that it's happening obviously it's not possible when you do street photography and um, this is part of the whole ethos of street photography but still if people ask you not to take a picture you should morally at least should um, respect the wish um do you have any choice of paper you print on well we print on variety of papers we print on variety of materials so sometimes it's um, um just basic paper um uh, that we we do desktop printing type thing so that's basically inkjet printing sometimes we have very expensive archival you know whatever cotton rag whatever paper um sometimes we print on adhesive material that we put straight onto the surface sometimes we print on on vinyl um so it changes according to the work uh, according to the space and according to cost as well sometimes certain work demands different a uh, way of different treatment so we we make sure that we show the work the best possible light that we can afford as well sometimes just prohibitively expensive some of these things um what people count as culturally and linguistically diverse okay so this is people from non english speaking background basically people from indigenous background a uh, people uh, from lgbti background um and so on so basically not what we 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 would have considered maybe in 1950 as being typical australian so anything anything uh, beyond that so basically something that reflects oops, reflects the um, so sorry uh, something that reflects the um, australian society as a whole so people from different backgrounds different cultural background different countries different languages different religions different whatever it would be sexual orientation whatever gender whatever it is so we want to have this covered as as much as we can but as i said before we are not a government institution we don't have a tick box we need this 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 that whatever we try to have it as wide as possible and when we choose the work we try to give voice to as many people from as many different backgrounds and as many subject matter as much subject matter as we can um as part of this process so the exhibition the festival is is interesting is interesting for everyone interesting for people who just don't know anything about that specific community or group or subject matter and those from that community who feel that they've never been able to express themselves or to be seen they've got a chance also to to be visible and to communicate with the general public and show the work i think that's about it as far as questions are concerned and we are 20 minutes over the time so 
if there are any questions now, um, please uh, put it in the in the chat box. Um, once again, the slides is, is there. What we did uh, today, very briefly. Um, the intention is to put this webinar online, I think, at some stage, so you would be able to re go back to it if you need to, or alternatively put some, some blog of sorts uh, with some of the key points, um, so you can revisit that if you need to. And now you know the people behind, you can contact Stephen or Anna, <clears throat> or contact info at head on. Anita will be able to answer you as well, Anita and Paula. So someone from head on will uh, give you an answer, but please don't leave it till the last minute um, because we will, we may not be able to, to answer your question or solve the problem. If you've got technical issues, for example, how do I upload or whatever it is that, that happened to be the issue. So, I think that's all from us. I want to say again, thank you to Anna and Stephen for um, running the behind the scene part of the, the session. And uh, I want to thank you, all of you, for uh, being here today. If you've got questions, ask the questions. And um, I think we're going to a survey from here. Please fill, fill up the survey, spend the few minutes that it takes. We need to get as much feedback from you so we can make the festival better for everyone and especially for you guys who are exhibiting in the festival. So, um, no survey I'm being told here. So we will go to the submission page. So if you've got any suggestions, please send us an email. You can send it to Anna or to info at head on with whatever suggestion you've got what you want to see in the in in the festival this year people that you want to 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 meet workshops you you're interested in or anything like that that comes to mind so i say goodbye here thanks so much for being here and we'll see you hopefully in november at the festival and before that we'll i hope to communicate with you after you submit your work so thanks very much bye bye